In this video, I will show you exercises on the net present value as a capital budgeting decision model. So, you will learn how to make capital budgeting decisions using the net present value, how to solve problems using both the scientific and the financial calculator, and you will also learn the difference between mutually exclusive projects and independent projects, and finally, we will solve problems using the net present value when the lives of the projects are uneven. Now let's get started with what is the net present value. In fact, the net present value is considered the best capital budgeting decision model. It is economically sound because of its application of the risk and return, and it also is consistent with the time value of money. Now, the net present value is a capital budgeting decision model in which all the cash inflows and outflows, the costs, of a project are stated in current value, and the cash outflows are deducted from the cash inflows. If the net amount is positive, it means the benefits exceed the costs, the project is accepted. And if the net amount is negative, the costs exceed the, the benefits, the project is rejected. This is how the net present value equation looks like. We have the cash outflow or the cost of the project stated in a negative uh, number. And then we add to it the cash inflows discounted to make it in the present value. We accept the project if the net present value is greater than zero or is a positive number. And we reject the project if the net present value is less than zero or a negative number. Now, let's look at an example. It says, Dweller Incorporation is considering a four-year project that has an initial after-tax outlay or after-tax cost of $80,000. The future after-tax cash inflows from the project are $40,000, $40,000, $30,000, and $30,000 for year 1, 2, 3, and 4, respectively. Dweller uses the net present value method and has a discount rate of 12%, will Dweller accept the project? This is a straightforward example, so let's use the net present value equation to solve it. We'll start by putting the cash outflow as a negative number, and then I will add to it the cash inflows for all the years discounted to today's value. And the answer for this is our net present value which is 28,020.99. Since the number is positive, we will accept the project. Now let's try solving the same problem, but this time using the financial calculator. We have the given values, the number of years is 4, interest rate is 12, and the cash flows minus 80,000, 40,000, 40,000, 30,000, and 30,000. It is very easy solving the net present value using the calculator. So let's get started by pressing the cash button in your calculator. And then enter the discount rate or the interest rate. We have it at 12 and execute. Using the arrow, go to cash and enter execute. You will find two columns, X and frequency or FREQ. Now ignore frequency and focus on X. In X, we will enter the cash inflows and outflows in the correct order. So we will start with minus 80,000, and then press the arrow, and then 40,000, press the arrow, again 40,000, press the arrow, 30,000, press the arrow, and then the final 30,000, and press the arrow. And now we will press the cash key again to go back to the menu. Using the arrow, we will go next to NPV and press Solve. And we will get the same answer, which is 28,020.9906. Simple as that. Using any capital budgeting decision model, we may not be only considering one project and whether it's worthwhile or not. We might even use them to compare between different projects. We have different kinds of scenarios. A scenario where we have independent projects 
Another scenario is where we have mutually exclusive projects. So what are independent projects? In case we have two projects that are independent, the acceptance of one project has no bearing on the acceptance or rejection of the other project. What that means is the two projects are very different. For example, a company has two projects in mind. Project one is about buying a photocopier for the company and project two is about buying computers for a certain department. These two projects are not the same. And so making decision about one has nothing to do with making decisions about project two. Whereas for mutually exclusive projects, there is need for only one project, and both projects can fulfill that current need. It means here we're talking about the same project, but we have different options. For example, a factory wants to buy sewing machines and is considering the options given by different companies. Another point is, there is scarce in resources that both projects would need. For example, a project might require a piece of land and we have only one piece of land and therefore we cannot cater for both projects. Another point is, by using funds for one project, there are not enough funds available for the other project. This is clear, we have a limited budget and we can only cater for one project. The project with the higher net present value is selected. Yes, when it comes to mutually exclusive projects, we will select the one with the higher net present value. Whereas with independent projects, we might just take any project with a positive net present value. Another scenario that arises when using the net present value is having projects with unequal lives. Using the net present value, it is not sound to compare between mutually exclusive projects when they cover different periods of time. There are two ways to overcome this hurdle. One is by multiplying the lives of project one and project two, and then finding the net present value using the common life for both projects. Here, the cash flows are repeated over the common period of time. As you might guess, this method may not be really sound because we are simply repeating the cash inflows, which is not very accurate. Another thing, it is very lengthy as we might end up with very long periods of time. The other method is by finding the equivalent annual annuity, EAA, which I will explain next. Now let's look at this example where we have projects with two different lives. It says, let's assume Curly Popcorn Company is considering the following two projects. Project one is a packaging machine, which is power efficient and requires less maintenance. The machine costs $9,000, but will save $2,000 of costs annually over the coming eight years. The project is considered a low risk, thus an 8.5% discount rate was assigned to it. Project two is a low-tech packaging machine that costs $5,250. The machine will save costs over the coming three years at $2,700 for the first year 2,500 for the second year, and 2,300 for the third year. An 8.5% discount rate was assigned to this project. Using the net present value, which project should Curly Popcorn Company choose? If you noticed, the first project has an 8 years life, whereas the second project has only 3 years life. So how do we solve this problem? We will solve it using the equivalent annual annuity. The equivalent annual annuity equation is simply the net present value divided by the present value interest factor of an annuity. If you remember, the present value interest factor of an annuity is the number you can find on the table, or you can even use the present value interest factor of an annuity equation, which looks like this. And then we select the project with the higher EAA, or equivalent annual annuity. So let's get started with solving the problem. The first step is finding the net present value of each project. Now, if you remember, the net present value is the total cash inflows, and we deduct from it the cash outflow and making sure that all the cash inflows and outflows are in the present value. 
Now for project one, we have a cash inflow of 2,000 annually for eight years. Does this sound like an annuity? Yes. So instead of finding the present value of each 2,000 cash inflow separately and then adding them up and then deducting the cost, we will simply find the present value of an annuity for the 2,000. So we will use the present value of an annuity equation like so. And we will find the present value annuity, which is 11,278.37. And now we will find the net present value. We have the uh, cash outflow, which is minus 9,000, and we will add to it our present value. And then our net present value will be 2,278.37. As for project two, we have different cash flows each time. So we will use the present value equation, the regular one, find all the present values, and then we will deduct the cash outflow from the cash inflows, like so. So we will simply use the net present value equation, like so. And we will get the answer, which is 1162.74. Now, this is not the answer. This is only part one of the answer. Part two is dividing the net present value by the present value interest factor of an annuity which is our equivalent annual annuity equation. So for project one, I have the net present value, which I have just found earlier. And now I have to find the present value interest factor of an annuity. I can find that using the table, or I can even use this equation. So here I found it, and now I will divide them using the equivalent annual annuity equation. And I will get the answer 404.0248. For project two, the same thing. I have the net present value, which I found at 1162.74, and I have to find the present value interest factor of an annuity. <clears throat> Using the equation, I found it, and now I will divide both to find the equivalent annual annuity, which is 455.258. Now, if you notice, project two has a higher equivalent annual annuity, and this way I will select project two. Now let's solve the same problem, but this time using the financial calculator. For project one, we have these given values. Number of time periods is eight, interest is 8.5, the cash flows, we have a minus 9,000, that's our cash outflow, and we have 2,000 for eight years. Let's start by finding the net present value using the calculator. So let's press the cash button where you have interest, enter 8.5, and then execute, and then you have the cash, enter execute, and then you will find the two columns, X and frequency, where you have X, enter the values, minus 9,000, execute, 2,000, execute 2000 all the way until you enter the 2000 eight times and then press the cash button again to go back to the menu and then go down to net present value and press solve and you will get the answer at 2278.365 now let's find the equivalent annual annuity using the compound key so press compound where you have N press 8, and then I 8.5, and then present value, you will enter the net present value as a minus figure. So we will enter minus 2278.365. Then make sure you got a zero on the future value, and one on the payment per year, and one on the compound per year. Go all the way to payment and press solve it will give you 404.0239, which is our equivalent annual annuity. Now let's do the same for project two. We have the given values, and now we will start by finding the net present value using the calculator. So press the cash button, 
where you have I enter 8.5 and then the cash enter you will find the two columns let's start with the cash outflow which is minus 5250 execute 2700 execute 2500 execute and 2300 execute then press the cash button again to go back to the menu and where you will find NPV press solve it will give you 1162.806 and now to find the equivalent annual annuity we will use the compound button so press compound where you will find N enter 3 where you will find I enter 8.5 where you will find present value enter the net present value in a minus figure which is minus 1162.806 and then make sure you don't have anything on the future value and the payment per year is one and the compounding per year is one and then go back all the way to payment and press solve and it will give you 455.28 which is our equivalent annual annuity if you notice it is much easier solving these problems using the financial calculator and now we got the same answers as the answers we got earlier using the scientific calculator so again project 2 is better than project 1 so project 2 will be accepted i hope you found this video very useful thank you for watching if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you have questions or comments please leave them in the comments below thank you